Hello and welcome, Lynx here and yes, it is the day before makeup test in Once Lonesome to the company. Let's check out if we can help our Kohai pass her math exams. Math actually was sort of my strong point at least. Primary and middle school. High school... Uh... I mean, I did get everything, like, on the basic level. At the higher level, I know I was very doubtful, so I guess that held me back a bit. But yeah, at university was good as well. Anyway, let's get to it. I think we can do that. You remember what to do after doing this, right? Hmm, you do this and then carry on with the rest of the equation using the formula. Yes, good, you got that down. I've been trying to study on my own too, you know. Good, because you're gonna need all that information in your head for tomorrow's test. If you pass, I'll bring you to the arcade. How about that? <gasps> Hibiki's face lights up like a child's on a Christmas day. The arcade! I haven't been there in ages. Then it's a deal? Heck yeah! For the rest of the night, the ambience around her consists of only rainbows and sunshine after hearing about the outing to the arcade. When do you think you'll get the results back? Ah, the worst part, the teachers being like, uh, you're not the only class I have. Yeah, you're not the only teacher that we have as well, so <laughs> nobody ever talked back like that for, unfortunately. Mm, probably the day after! That's crazy fast, by the way. Okay then, we'll go on the day you get your results back after school. Mm, neat! I'm gonna spend all my money at the arcade! Don't do that. Know your limit. Play within it. <laughs> Cheapskate! Go do your practice problems. On the other hand, I understand why Kotone would say that, because, I mean, I feel like spending money in the arcade and also gambling, maybe there might be a connection between the two a little bit. You know, both are games, right? With the arcade, sure, you don't win anything, and the you know, gambling, you have also games of sorts, but there is the temptation of winning something. I understand why she would be against that, yeah. On the other hand, let's go have fun, at least. From the looks of how comfortable she is now with solving the questions, she should be set for tomorrow. I stop going hard on her and let her relax so she doesn't get stressed for the big day. She stretches and lays her head down on the table to take a break after two nights long lesson. Uh, I'm just going to lay down for a bit. I might fall asleep but promise to wake me up in 15 minutes, okay? I look at the clock beside her bed and take note that it's already 9.55 pm and she's blinking. Why is she blinking? <laughs> We've been working on the tutoring thing without a break and I'm sure it's taken a big toll on her as well as I. I've never tutored anyone before in my life, so this was a new experience for me. Oh boy. The first time I had to tutor someone was actually math as well. But it was in primary school, by the way. The teacher... Funnily enough, the teacher was like, You and you, uh, would you mind staying after class and teaching him? That's your job, woman. <laughs> of course, I did not say that back. Uh, I was like, ah, eh, sure, I don't mind. Actually, I don't mind what was my answer. I don't remember what was uh, my answer exactly. But I did stay, and the guy was like... He did like three... Three exercises, I think. And gave up, claiming he will do it at home as well. With his sister, blah blah blah. Turned out he of course didn't. But, well, it was two against one, and two of us said how it was he was supposed to do it. We were, 
by the way, three exercises and it took us like an hour. Like, ugh. Crazy. Anyway, I've never tutored anyone before in my life. I read this line already. Sorry about that. Uh, also, I'm like going on a tangent in this episode for some reason. We've been working on the tutoring thing without a break and I'm sure it's taken a big toll on her as well as I. I read this one as well. I've never... How did I go back? That's so weird. I kind of liked it, even if it took a while to get the ideas into her brain. I follow suit and lie my head on the table as well, facing her angelic sleeping face. Soft snores indicate that she's passed out, probably from tonight's last stretch of learning. Oh my god, we get to see what they are learning! Yuri's love, Yuri's life, Saint Vidan, Udon Udon, when can be your... Wait, oh, I actually don't know what's the first word here. Something can be your Yuri dealer, guaranteed quality Yuri, okay. 9x minus 7i. 3, 3x, 7u. Okay, you have to keep that, that's true. Uh, this time this okay, this time this alright. Then we get this, this, it's all out. So no, no. Okay, E is lower than 3u. Okay, seems like it's actually done correctly. <laughs> I wonder if that same thing is in her notebook. Seems like... No, because I see 69 at the end of it. Anywho, let's get to the text. Soft snores indicate she's passed out, probably from tonight's last stretch of learning. Her hazel grey hair cascades across her soft marshmallow like cheeks, a terrace on tempts me to poke and pinch them. I give into the temptation and land a gentle poke on the cheek that's exposed to me. As expected, my finger sinks in the skin and the skin bounces back up when I remove my digit. This is more entertaining than I thought it would be. I play with her cheeks for another minute and stop revealing her sleeping face. She's a lot cuter when she doesn't speak. <laughs> She's a lot cuter when she doesn't speak. Wow! There was never really a chance where I was able to sit and fully see the details of her face. That's true. The only thing I took notice of were her big circular eyes and her slightly big ears. Her eyelashes are kind of on the shorter side, but that doesn't limit her feminine charms. Her thin lips are painted a faint red and dressed neatly under her small nose. I begin to imagine what she'd be if she wasn't as cheeky as she is, if she was a princess type, the one that's all polite and full of manners. That was my first impression of her until she finally showed me her true colors. It's nice for seeing the true colors of someone. Well, unless the colors are like, ugh, but still. She might be audacious and cheeky, but I think that's what makes her her. The cheerful and bright atmosphere she gives off lends energy to those around her. Maybe that's what made me stick with her and not find her annoying. It's like she recharges me. Not one minute has been boring in the moments I spent with her. I'll never figure out what kind of spell she pulls in order to do that. Before I end up falling asleep with her, I get and grab the blanket on her bed and place it on top of her. I leave the house without notifying her so as to not disturb her slumber. I'd carry her to the bed, but I'm afraid it might wake her up. Or will it be better for her tomorrow, cause that's not quite a nice sleeping position. I shake my head and leave her be. She looks so too tired to wake up now. Suddenly, I take my leave and go home. I guess I'll hear from her on Friday. Friday! Friday after school. Her results are out today, supposedly, but I haven't heard anything from her yet. During lunch, she said she herself hadn't gotten worried. yet. I clearly remember her munching away at her lunch without her usual chip herself. It's after school now, and I still haven't received the news yet, despite checking my phone for a message every other minute. I went outside the doors of the school for her to appear with the what I hope to be good outcome. 
other students hustling to their outdoor shoes and head for home, and others run around doing errands or are heading to their club activities. I take another look at my phone for the tag time, exactly 3.30 pm, and no sign of Hibiki yet, damn, you are staying that long on a Friday, that sucks. Maybe she got abducted by aliens. Thinking about it a little more, since she's not here yet, she might be on the rooftop. I turn around and walk back inside, but as I step through the door, I bump the girl I'm looking for. I stare down at her as she recoils against my chest. Sorry. She looks up to find a familiar face and her smile returns. Oh, senpai, were you waiting for me? Here? What else? Sorry, it took a while because my teacher gave me a long lecture about keeping up my studies and whatnot, but look at this! A piece of paper is then shown in my face with a red number of 92 on the top right corner. That's nice. That's a good result. Wait, it's out of 100, right? <laughs> Woo, a 92. Mm, wait, you said that like you didn't expect such a high score. Hibiki displays a pouting face and puts her hands on her hips in an insulted manner. Well, kind of based on your previous score, but damn, you worked hard, didn't you? Of course, I couldn't let you down by failing. You spent so much time helping me. It was really only, what, three days? Don't worry about it. I seriously thought you failed and went up to the rooftop to sulk. I would have you I had failed, but I didn't, so now I'm here waiting to go to the arcade. She grabs my arms and drags me out of the doors and down the stairs, urging me to take her to her reward. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Go, 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 go! Okay, okay, calm, calm down, will ya? She's gone. Whoa, oh, I did not expect that sound. Ooh. Yuri Game, Unpim Station, welcome. I love the fact that they did something like that. <laughs> I love the fact. <laughs> On any other day, the arcade's usually not fucked, but my forgetful mind forgot today's Friday, also known as the day where the arcade becomes the sea of sticky and musty people. Even though I plead to Hibiki about the crowds, she's insistent on hitting the arcades today. Alright, just don't get lost, okay? Okay! We start at the upper floors and decide to work our way down. The upper floor consists of racing games and those fancy rhythm gates, which she seems to adore. We managed to find two empty racing seats and plunk down for a race. Have you played this before? I dig up some spare change and put a coin in. I'm watching myself so I don't overspend today, not that I have much anymore since I stopped getting allowance. Once I believe I was only a child back then. Just have fun, don't worry about finishing the course. You don't have to tell me that. With her menacey green, she presses on the accelerator pedal and her in-game car speeds past me. I don't give up without putting up a good fight. Both of us bump into the sides and walls, but with all laughs and giggles. At the end, I cross the finish line ahead of her by just a smidgen and she demands a rematch. Come on! One more, one more! No, 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 no. Save your money for other games, there is more to see. Chee! Come on, come on, let's try something different. With the big variety in games here, we spent a good 45 minutes trying out several games. I mainly watch her, which I don't mind, today is for her to enjoy anyway. Correct approach? She's surprisingly good at fighting games, and even caught me by surprise when she somehow won against the person next to us. Beginner's luck or hidden talent? We weave through the shooting games and even DDR next. I was him having a blast and fright when I didn't think I'd read anything at the arcade she does the Purikura booths. It did become stiffer and looked and... Purikura booths? What's that? I don't know what that is. Go to Senpai! Please! I'm actually trying to google it now, okay? What, what was it called? Purikura, okay, what the heck? Purikura. I totally did not write it correctly, by the way. Purikura. Booth. Is it the 
Oh, okay, it's that freaking photo thing. Okay. Got it. No, I hate pictures. Wait, did me going back with text? Erase the noise of the arcade. <laughs> nice. Senpai, for me, for me, I didn't get that 92 for nothing. I groaned this gruntled groan in annoyance. No way in hell. He began and pulls out the biggest weapon she has. I did pay for that 50,000, didn't I? She really wonder, didn't she? She looks to the sign knowing full well she's going to have her thing, have things her way. Knowing I have no one to fight back with, I sigh and drop my shoulders in defeat and walk in the booth. Now this is just blackmail. What do you expect from me, Akuzo's daughter? <laughs> I actually do a double take on that joke and let out a little smirk. Well, at least I'm glad she's comfortable enough with me to joke about even that. And pretty much all the pictures, my face remains a poker face, but even the special effects in the editing portion of the attraction made the pictures cute and fun to look at. I disagree with her editing skills, but I let her do all the work. I don't think I'm keeping this. God on us, and but you should smile more often. Your, your face will be stuck like that forever if you look so grumpy all the time. Good. That's what I want. Oh, okay, grumpy my grumpy son. Mm, we walk out the booth and decide to head down to the bottom floor, where all the crane machines are. Oh no. I walk around eyeing each crane machine at one of the prizes catch my eye. I thought he'd be good like a plush or something instead of those anime characters. Ah, does she watch anime, I wonder? I don't find me, it's just a borderline. Porn, isn't it? No, it's not. No. It's not. It isn't. We find new Coracy in mind, I turn around to ask her, only to find that she's gone missing. Hippiki? I frankly look around. She the swarms of people to find her hazel grey hair and dark blue uniform. Nowhere in sight. I told her not to get lost. Trace my steps back to where I was walking, but no luck. Shh, where did she wander off to? It was then that I remember I have her number now. I whip out my phone and start messaging her about her whereabouts. No immediate reply. I swear that I stop my angry mark when the couple next to me starts making a ruckus. Hey, it's so close, we're almost there for again. There's no point, these games are meant to be rigged. Hmm, but we almost have it. It's alright, I can buy you something even more valuable than a toy. You said it, no taking back. Of course, anything for my boo, let's head out. The plush in question is hanging over the ledge head first. Like the girl said, they were really close to getting it. What a shame to give up like that, especially when it's right there. It will just be easier for the next player. AKA me. I waste no time to take my chance at playing the crane game. Down goes the 500 yen coin and the light beam flashing indicating the game has started. I position the crane near the tail of the cat plush in hopes that the crane will bring the butt up just enough to bring the entire body into the hatch. What with the weakness of the crane's grasp, it only leaves the butt a mere inch before dropping back to its place. <laughs> My second turn starts and I have to quickly switch up my strategy. This time I go for the middle instead of the tail. When it inches the plush forward just a bit, my hopes shoot up through the roof. I don't know how it works, but if it's working, I'm gonna keep at it. Finally, on my fifth and last ride, the cat plushy slowly makes its way down the hole. Yes! I hurriedly grab the reward and shake it in excitement. I think this was the first time I won something from a fr crane game. Thank you, previous couple. I'll probably give the... Oh, she smiled. Give this to Hibiki. I don't really keep stuffed animals in my room, and I know Hibiki has tons in hers. The suspect, suspenseful game nearly makes me forget my initial mission, which was to locate her. After another quick, unfruitful look around my area to see if she's found her way to me, I briskly walk to another aisle to search for my lost cat. I check my phone again to see if she has replied. It seems she replied two minutes later I texted her. I was probably too busy being occupied by the crane game to realize my phone sent a notification. I tag the grey cat I just won under my arm and speed walk towards the entrance of the arcade, which is where Hibiki said she's at. Whoa, no, stop, 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 stop. No, it didn't work again. With my careful maneuvering and swerving, I managed to dodge the huge parade of people. 
I tip to Twig get a glimpse of where Hibiki might be standing and find her on the left of doors, but with some unexpected guests. Two men loom over her with sneering first looks. Looks like they want to pick Hibiki up for some fun, as they would say. Oh my god. Even from afar, I can tell that Hibiki is feeling jittery and extremely uncomfortable. Makes you want to punch the lecherous faces off of those guys. I stomp closer and put on my most imminent face. Come on, kitty. I promise you'll be fun. You'll have the time of your life. Come on with us. We'll show you a good time. I pop up next to Hibiki and give our guys a warning. Oh, fuck off. Oh, Koto the senpai. Oh, is this a friend of yours? Oh, the more the merrier. We'll show you a whole new world. Her ass smirk makes you want to gag and throw up. The other man reaches for Hibiki's arm in an attempt to drag her along, but I slap his hand away and wrap my arm around her shoulder, pulling her close to me. Okay. She's my son, don't fucking touch her. Oh, shit, lesbians, damn. Yes, she's my girlfriend, got a problem with that? Picking on helpless girls like this? No wonder you two don't have scored Jack. Now piss off. Without waiting for this unnecessary... Their unnecessary plans, I drop my hand from her shoulders and hold her hand to pull her away from the situation. Nice. I take her to a less populated area even though I'm not paying much attention to where we are actually headed to. We stop in front of a little empty playground in a park. I take one cautious look behind us to make sure that those dudes haven't been following us. Luckily, they aren't. When my slightly anxious state has calmed down my less, I'm still holding on to Hibiki's hand and I hastily let go in embarrassment. Sorry, sorry. And, uh, sorry about earlier. Uh, that was honestly the only way I could think of to get them away from you. Uh, no, no, it's fine. Uh, thanks for the help. No, no problem. I want to break this ice so badly. Jesus. G guess I saved you this time, huh? <laughs> You're right, we're even then. <laughs> My fingers playing with the tag on the toy out of awkwardness. awkwardness. I didn't think of the awkwardness that the action would have entailed. I still look at her face and notice that it's kind of really red. Could be that she hasn't been feeling well. She's been working really hard lately. Holy, are you okay? Do you have a fever? I place my palm on her forehead, feel if her temperature is higher than usual. <laughs> her squeal scares me into retrace, retracting my hand. Oh no, no, I'm fine. It's nothing. I think just cause we were kind of rushing out of there before. So that's it. There's nothing to worry about then. She probably doesn't get much exercise on the daily, huh? That's good. What's what you caught a fever from working your butt off recently? He biggest smiles her usual reassuring smile at me. <laughs> I'm not weak, senpai. I notice then that in the opposite hand of the one I held, she's holding a medium-sized orange cut plush with a... Slightly weird look of ace on it. Hey, did you win that? Mm. She also says just now that she had been holding that this whole time. Oh yeah, I saw this in front of you, so I tried to get it. <laughs> A grumpy cat, let's go. She points her prize to me and the cat's face really is weird looking. This reminds you of me? Yeah, always oh, so grumpy looking. It, right. Speaking of which, I got this for you, but you already want something for yourself. I show her the cunt in my arms and hand it to her. I don't keep stuff anymore, so you can have this too if you want. Hibiki shakes her head. No, 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 no. I think you should keep it. You want it with your own money effort. You totally deserve it. But. No, but just keep it, senpai. There is no hurting having stuffed animal by your bed, right? Uh, it will keep you company when I'm not around. She gives me a big smile in her haughty manner, teasing me. Okay then, I'll keep it so I can pinch its cheeks when I can't pinch yours, right? Right? I reach out and binge that smile of her face playfully. Oh, got the missing pie! <laughs> I'll be glad to keep it if that's the case. Mini! Mini, mini, mini! He big emotions closer towards the little playground set and climbs to the top of, to, of the slide. Now that I'm done my makeup test, does that mean you won't be coming over again? She poses a good question. I only ever visited her house because I was her temporary tutor. Without the job, there is no reason for me to come over anymore. Well... Even if you're not my tutor anymore, my house is always free for you to come drive by. 
Sure, if I feel like it, I don't mind bugging you. She positions her body comfortably on the small slide and goes down. Albeit slow due to the friction of her hips and the sides of the tiny slide. Her teal eyes glint in the setting sun when she looks in my direction. Promise? It's not that I don't want to hang out with her. It's fun being around her. And I find it much more calming when it's just the two of us alone without anyone else around. I want to, ma to be myself and not need a filter. But with entrance exams coming up, I have to focus more on my studies. If I can just study at her house and hope I don't get distracted. I promise. The sun has mostly gone down by now, and only some orange hues remain in the sky. But her smile after seeing the promises shines dazzlingly in the in the dark unlit park. No doubt, I physically feel my heart skip a bit. The swirling emotions in my chest malfunctioned my brain, freezing me momentarily. When I snap back to, into life, I turn around to hide my confused and red face, even though the darkness probably didn't show much. I try to think of something else before of the, the feelings, uh, before the feelings go into overdrive and I lose control over myself. It's dinner time now, isn't it? I can cook you something in my house. Would you like that? I think I have some chicken in the fridge. Uh, maybe we can stop by the spring for some extra, more extra ingredients. Her voice extracts me from my thinking and I lose my ability to speak. Hey, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna head home. Being with her any longer right now will just muddle my feelings even more, so I reject her offer and create an excuse to leave. I, I think I gotta head home tonight for something, I'm gonna go first. You know you're way back, right? I don't notice, but I look in all directions I'm, I'm speaking and it might have been obvious I was lying. I start bolting for it without even waiting for a response. The sky is now a dark purple and I think of all the possible dangers of leaving Hibik alone to go home by herself. The thought halts me mid-run and I turn around. Hibik is still sitting at the bottom of the slide looking stunned. I don't want any more guys trying to pick her up or her getting into a crisis. Uh, actually, I'll walk you to the station. It's dark now. It will be safer if there are two of us. Send by. The walk back made the consists of silence as both of us are tired. Today was a full day of school and then an after school outing to the market. I don't mind the silence. In fact, it helps me sort my mind easier. We bit our farewells at the station as our platforms are on the opposite sides. I get on my train before her and head for home, carrying a million thoughts. My mom greets me at the door when I arrive home, but I only reply with a small nod due to my busy mind running around. I fall into the embrace of my bed and remember that I have the grey cat plush in my hand. My third eyes open to examine the stuffy I won today. The cat's face looked cuter than the one he began that I love a bit, remembering how she said it reminded her of me. No, it's the 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 other one. That <sighs> its cheeks stand out and I bring myself to pinch it like I did to Hibikis. I'm not sure how long I've laid on the bed for, but it seems like an eternity as I quietly sort my concerns out. I pinch the grey cat's cheeks again when I finally come to the conclusion of what my feelings truly are. My feelings towards Hibiki have evolved in some more than what I bargained for. I've never imagined that would ever happen, nor did I know when it started happening, but I know now. I know now. That I might have fallen in love with her! You might have, have yeah? My eyes open to a sea of light and I check my phone for the time. The eye blindingly bright screen reads 2.01 a.m. It's hard for me to wake up in the middle of the night, but it's most likely because I left the lights on. I get up from bed grudgingly and turn off the lights to go back to a slumber. I plop down hard on the mattress and my arm hits a soft bump. I remember I am now in position of a cute stuffed animal in the blush madly when the memories of what I figured out hours ago come back. My body reacts strongly from the flood of embarrassing flashbacks and curls up into a ball. My face becomes hot and my mind begins twirling again. 
I try to calm myself down by thinking of something else, but her dazzling smile and infectious laughter is the only thing that occupies my mental image. Is. This is the first time that this has happened to me and I don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, um, I mean, understandable. Falling in love is both great and makes you like, you know, you basically have no clue what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's awesome though, it's awesome. Uh, boop. It's almost unbelievable that I feel this way after spending time with her for only three weeks. Three weeks! Am I just a really easy person? That doesn't make sense if this is the first time it's happened. Perhaps I'm mistaking these feelings? That's it. That has to be it. It does not have to be it. But no matter how much I deny it, the truth keeps coming back, screaming in my face. Especially when the grey cat is staring right at me. <sighs> what have you done to me? I hold the plushie up and start pinching the cheeks again, but doing that just makes me recall her. I'm using reactions when I do it to her. I hug the plushie close and consider what Hibiki would say if she knew. How would she even react? She'd probably be grossed out and then I'll just ruin the entire friendship. All I have to do is hide these feelings, bury them deep into the ground and never let light shine on them. Just go on with life, become busy with entrance exams, and forget about them, right? Things are fine as they are, and I'll keep it that way. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself, damn it. Maybe things will mellow out, and it will just turn out that I was wrong this whole time, and things will go back to normal. The midnight dark has my drained energy pulls me back into the dose, with my churning brain acting as a lullaby. You know what, I think we'll find out what our girl will decide to do in the next episode. We'll see, we'll see. Yes, let's end it for today. It was neat. Uh, arcade, exam, makeup, successfully completed. So I guess it is now about our exams, the finals, and maybe getting to university eventually. We'll see. I think the next episode will be the last one, by the way. Uh, so, subscribe. That way you will get notification that, you know, new video is out right tomorrow. If you're into this series. Would be super cool. Also, consider liking the video if you enjoyed it. Um, uh, did you ever have to, had to, had to, did you ever have to get makeup? exams or tests i mean i think everyone had to but i will ask that anyway did you have to, to take a makeup test ever in your life um, and have you succeeded with it it's pretty much all also do you have arcades in your country that's what i'm curious about because in poland i run into it like a few times only when i was by the sea where I am, never, probably, yeah. Uh, and that's it. Also Twitch, Twitter, Instagram in the description. If you're into the stuff, you'll follow me there. Uh, that's it. Hope you have all a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow as well. Bye-bye.